o'clock, okay? Okay. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the November 25th, 2013 meeting of the Marquette City Commission. Would everyone please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> City Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Your Honor. Commissioner Kimbenzi. Commissioner Campana. Here. Commissioner Coyne. Here. Commissioner Reynolds. Here. Commissioner Ryan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Stone, uh, Stonehouse. Here. And Mayor Nemi. Here. Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Kimbenzi is uh, out of town on vacation. Is there a motion to excuse her? Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse. I motion to ex uh, excuse Com uh, Commissioner Kimbenzi. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Reynolds? I second. Thank Support. you. It's been moved by uh, Mayor, Prem, Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse and seconded by Commissioner Reynolds to excuse Commissioner Kimbenzi. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. The motion is approved unanimously. Okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, note of any agenda changes. Are there any agenda changes being proposed? Mayor Pertem Stonehouse. I uh, would like to add an authorization to purchase video equipment for the commission chambers. Okay, is there a second for that motion? Mr. Coyne. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to add. Do we need to vote on this, Mr. City Attorney? Okay, that, that adds it. Okay, why don't we add that as uh, item number nine. Are there any other changes to the agenda? Is there? Commissioner Reynolds? I motion to add a presentation of gifts from the Sister City Committee. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second the motion, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Uh, we'll add that uh, under the, as the first presentation prior to the Market Area Wastewater Treatment Advisory Board presentation. Uh, now we need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Commissioner Ryan. I move we approve the agenda as amended. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse. It's been moved by Commissioner Ryan's. Second by Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. The motion is passed unanimously. Okay, the next item on the agenda is announcements. Uh, there, as usual, we have a number of uh, openings on boards and committees. Uh, we uh, always make some, some progress, but we still have a number of openings. The, Aging Services Advisory Committee, we have one opening, uh, which should be a housing representative, someone who's interested in housing. Uh, I don't know if that means if it's someone who lives in a house can, can qualify or not, but uh, I suppose it means some sort of uh, interest or expertise in housing. The second is Arts and Culture Advisory Committee has three openings. Harbor Advisory Committee has one, two, one opening. Local Officers Compensation Commission has two openings. Marquette Brownfield Redevelopment Authority has two openings. Marquette Housing Commission has one opening. Parks and Recreation Advisory Board has two openings. Pan Planning Commission has two openings. Police Fire Pension Board has one opening. The Regional Recreation Authority Business Plan Ad Hoc Committee has one opening for an alternate member representing the City of Marquette. And the Sister City, Sister City Advisory Committee has five openings. The Sustainable Community Ad Hoc Committee has one opening, and the Traffic Parking Advisory Committee has three openings. So if there are any citizens in interested, there's lots of opportunities for people to serve the city, and I'd ask my fellow commissioners to perhaps, uh, in their contacts, encourage people to step forward and, and uh, also volunteer for our boards and committees. Okay, we'll proceed to presentations. The First presentation will be by Paulette Lindbergh, uh, guest from the sister city Higashiomi. 
Mr. City Manager, would you like to meet us at the uh, Thank you for, for having me come in this evening to present such gifts. Um, as many of you know, I was um, again able to lead and, and uh, take seven members of our community to Higashiomi, Japan, October 17th through the 28th for our uh, biannual visit. This is our 34th year. And next year, when they visit us, um, I have a firm promise from their newly elected mayor that um, he will plan to the best of his schedule abilities to uh, join the delegation and be here for our 35th anniversary of our program. So um, it's, it's quite an honor when their mayor um, is able to, to visit our city. It has not happened for a while, so we'll certainly look forward to it. Um, sometime after the first of the year, we will hold a public meeting where uh, not only our city commission and officials, but our community members who are interested in all the details of our 10-day stay in Higashiomi will be discussed and, and photos will be shown and many, many stories and interesting things that occurred during the trip will, will uh, be presented to those who are interested. It's always an exciting and, and long story to, to tell. So we'll look forward to that probably mid-January or so. We'll get that to be a, a public event. Tonight, I'm, I'm honored to present to our city um, a um, gift from the city of Higashiomi. And it's my pleasure to present that to um, Mayor Nimi. They were, by the way, presented with a gift from the delegation, which was one of Dr. Mark Himes, our newly retired artist, um, one of his wood carvings, and they were extremely impressed with that. And uh, in fact, I just saw Mark today, and he was very proud to know that that had been presented. So again, photos of that will be shown at a later date. The second gift is a personal gift for Mayor Robert Nemi. And the third gift item is directed to our city manager who accepts on behalf of the city. And uh, so these items, I don't know what's in them because they traveled <coughs> safely back from Japan with me. You're welcome to open them. Um, I'm also providing you a copy of Mayor Ogura's full name, address, so that an official thank you on behalf of our city can be sent to him. He speaks excellent English. He's uh, looking forward to meeting each of our commissioners. He's extremely interested in how our commission works. And that looks like you have a very intricate um, wall hanging. It looks like it would be a kimono designed in a folding fashion and it will look good on an easel or in a wall place so enjoy that yes this this has been done um, I'm quite sure by Taro Kojima who is one of the well-known um, artists who funds our artist program and the pine tree would be extremely significant for them as it is for us. And he always thinks of us when he's designing anything with trees or with the skylines that he so enjoyed when he was here. Okay. So that's quite, quite lovely and um, I'm sure the city will be glad that you recognized right away it had significance. <laughs> right, I remember from, uh, I think last visit there, there was something about the tree and I didn't remember Absolutely. <clears throat> I appreciate that and on behalf of the city certainly we, right. we appreciate the gifts, we appreciate the the efforts of our sister city delegation, and, and it's a, a, a relationship and friendship that we, we certainly value and look forward to hosting the, the delegation next summer in this <coughs> Well, it was an exciting be, trip this year, and yeah. it's, it's, it's nice to know that you'll be ready to welcome them next mm -hmm. year. And these will be on display in the Pure White Public Library. Yes. In fact, today I presented the Chamber of Commerce gift, which is already on display oh, there. Okay. It's a lovely yes, owl. Uh, a little bit different than the owls they've presented before, but they seem to be trying to give us a series of owls done again by Taro Kojima. Okay. So well, thank, thank you, you gentlemen, yep. commissioners, and uh, it was an honor to be with you all this evening. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, the next uh, item on the agenda is a presentation on the Market Area Wastewater Treatment Advisory Board by Chairman Kirk Page. Mr. Page. <coughs> <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to uh, give you a brief presentation on the uh, Marquette Area Wastewater Treatment Facility. Uh, the advisory board is composed of uh, five members, uh, one from the city of Marquette, uh, one from Chocolate Township, and three from uh, uh, the city of Marquette, one from Marquette Township one from Chocolate Township and three from the City of Marquette. Uh, each uh, member can have two alternates. Uh, we meet the, th the uh, third Thursday of each month at the Marquette Area Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, and of course, that's at 1.30, and I'd urge uh, anyone who's interested to uh, come out and take part in discussions, perhaps learn more about the plant. Uh, the Market Area Wastewater Treatment Advisory Board was established uh, by an intergovernmental agreement uh, back in 1977. Uh, that was when the uh, plans were first made to uh, reconstruct the plant. It was built on the site of the original plant, uh, which I believe is from the 1950s. Uh, the three-party agreement establishes the uh, responsibilities of the advisory board. Uh, the city of Marquette, the uh, majority owner, also serves as the contract operator of the facility. And the board oversees the operation of the facility under the provisions of the three-party agreement. And among our uh, responsibilities are recommending rules and regulations uh, regarding facility operation, uh, allocate and assign fixed demand costs uh, based on ownership. The city of Marquette owns 85%, Marquette Township 10%, and Chocolate 5%. And also to allocate and assign uh, operation and maintenance cost, and that's based on uh, metered plant influent. And uh, also to make rec recommendations regarding the uh, operating budget uh, for the treatment facility. Uh, some recent accomplishments were uh, uh, about five years ago, uh, we completed a, uh, basically the third construction of the plant uh, that was financed through uh, the state of Michigan uh, drinking water revolving fund. The cost was $15.3 million. And I believe that included uh, about $1 million in a grant. And the balance was uh, financed uh, over 20 years at uh, uh, very low interest. Uh, I believe it was just last year we constructed a 1,200 cubic yard biosolid storage facility. And that was built to uh, meet uh, a new MDEQ mandate uh, requiring 180-day biosolids on-site storage. Uh, the cost of that was $444,000, and uh, we uh, paid for that out of uh, funds on hand. Uh, we, we do set aside uh, 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 some monies to uh, fund uh, uh, some, some of the smaller uh, capital outlay projects. Uh, without having to borrow money. Uh, the staff has also sustained uh, regulatory compliance, uh, maintained current rates for wastewater services, uh, reduced uh, biosolids disposal cost, and uh, stabilized process control uh, to meet uh, MDEQ compliance. Uh, some of the goals for the upcoming uh, year and beyond are to develop a long-term biosolids management plan. Uh, the plan is to reduce the biosolids handling costs and improve operational efficiency. Uh, pursue more land application sites, uh, including uh, brownfield reclamation sites, uh, additional agricultural land, and uh, a biosolids compost partnership with the Marquette County <coughs> Solid Waste Management Authority. Uh, maintain current rates for wastewater services, uh, seek grant funding opportunities, uh, formalize standard operational procedures, uh, develop a formal asset management plan, and uh, update the wastewater treatment facility website, and to develop a, a formal grease trap inspection and enforcement program 
with Marquette and Chocolate Townships. Uh, one of the grant opp funding opportunities, uh, I believe, is on your agenda tonight to uh, pass a resolution to uh, uh, to accept uh, asset management uh, uh, funding from the state of Michigan. It's a uh, wonderful program. It's a certainly a wise use of state money, and I believe it's uh, uh, based on uh, actually a state referendum that we voted uh, several years ago. Uh, to uh, establish uh, uh, clean uh, Great Lakes monies. And I urge you to pass that resolution. Uh, some of the issues and uh, things that are discussed at the board level are uh, the NPDES uh, permit renewal, uh, implementing a formal asset management uh, program per MDEQ requirements. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've lost some senior uh, staff people. Uh, we're wor working to improve shared services. Uh, a recent project is uh, that's just starting is to uh, complete the network segmentation project, which is to separate the city network uh, to address security and reliability issues, or separate from the city network. Uh, Maintain the current trend of holding the per unit rate uh, that's uh, uh, been established here for several years now, and to develop a long-term biosolids marketing plan. So uh, here's a photo of our, I believe this is an actual photo of the outfall through the bushes there. So again, I urge you to attend meetings uh, if you wish to learn more about the wastewater treatment facility the third Thursday of the month at 1.30 at the wastewater plant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Uh, the next presentation is uh, from the North Country Trail Association by Ms. Lorena Jinkerson. Thank you, Mayor Nimi, City Commission, and City Manager for allowing me to present the concept of the NCTA Trail Town to you tonight. I'm Lorena Jinkerson. I'm the president of the North Country Trail Hikers Chapter here in Marquette of the North Country Trail Association, um, of which I'm a board member of as well. A um, couple things we're going to go through real quickly tonight is what is the North Country Trail, because it's amazing how many people don't know. What is a trail town? Why should Marquette become a trail town? How does the trail town work? And then what are some next steps? The North Country Trail Association is a nonprofit volunteer organization that through an agreement with the National Park Service builds, maintains, promotes, and protects the North Country National Scenic Trail, also known as the North Country Trail, um, as it traverses across seven states from the New York, Vermont border, um, through New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, crossing the Mackinac Bridge into the UP, into Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, and ending about halfway through North Dakota. It is the longest at 4,600 miles of any of the National Scenic Trails, twice the length of the Appalachian Trail, and it goes right through our beautiful town. Um, the North Country Trail is essentially a linear national park um, that is not owned by the National um, Park Service, unfortunately. Um, it is owned instead by public lands, as you can see here in the state of Michigan, the green areas, and also private lands. And if you look up by in Marquette area, we have a lot of private lands. And of course, when it comes through the city of Marquette, that's public lands, but um, we are, our chapter is in a lot of private lands. And if you look carefully, you'll also notice that um, Michigan has 1,150 miles of the 4,600 including the five miles of the Mackinac Bridge. Um, so we have more tr trail than any of the other um, states. Our chapter has approximately 150 members, and we maintain about 120 miles of trail starting at the Rock River Road north of Chatham in Alger County, and then proceeding west all the way through Marquette County, and then ending in Barriga County west of um, Craig Lake State Park. 
Some of the highlights of our trail are the Rock River Canyon Wilderness, the McCormick Wilderness, the Elliott Donnelly Wilderness, the Lake Levasseur Recreation Area, um, Lakeland Sculpture Park, Little Presque Isle, Wetmore Landing, Craig Lake State Park, and of course Marquette's Bike Path beginning at the Welcome Center. We are on the Mar Marquette Bike Path all the way up to Holly Street for about six miles, and of course the city of Marquette. We hold different kinds of events throughout the year, chap general membership meetings where the public is welcome and we have a pub, um, presentation that is generally interesting to people who are interested in hiking. We hold a hike on National Trails Day. We have a booth at the, the NMU Fall Fest. In the summer months, we hold monthly hikes for anybody who, in the community who wants to join us. We take carloads of people over to the uh, Mackinac Bridge for the Labor Day hike, the only day of the year you can hike those particular five miles of the North Country Trail. We hold two work sessions per week throughout the season when we can work. Um, unfortunately, that's not now. Um, and then we also do trail building when we get the ma maintenance done each season. The Softies hike is a hike that we are doing across the whole UP on the North Country Trail where we are hiking it 40 miles per year approximately over two weekends. And it'll take us 10 years, but we'll get across the UP. We've already done it once and we're headed back the other way. And then we also do presentations about the trail to other groups. Um, October 10th, I was with the Market Beautification Committee and did a presentation. And then I also did one on October 21st to the Markets Parks and Recreation um, Board about the trail town concept. So what is a trail town? A trail town is a community like Marquette through which the North Country Trail passes that supports hikers with services and promotes the trail to its citizens. It is not only a community, it is a relationship between the community, its resources, amenities, and economy, the trail, and the NCTA, the North Country Trail Association, telling the story. And it's very interesting that in the UP, we have five towns the trail goes through. St. Ignace, um, Grand Marais, Munising, Marquette, and Ironwood. If you think about a hiker, hiking the whole trail coming from the west from Ironwood. They hike 200 miles on trail between Ironwood and Marquette before they hit Marquette. So to another town to get amenities from that's directly on the trail. So Marquette is very, very important. This past summer we had five long distance hikers come through that I know of. Um, two of them did the whole 4,600 miles. One spent three days here in Marquette. This was the city he spent more time in than any other city along the trail. Um, so it is an important stop for hikers. So what are the benefits for the trail? It provides hikers resupply, access and amenities, access to the post office, to the library, um, to pick up groceries. Um, it grows awareness, making it a resource that is valued by the community. It's amazing how many people in this town do not know it goes right along the lakeshore on the bike path. It helps protect the trail by including it in local planning efforts. Benefits to the town? Tourism destination. People will come to Marquette and from Marquette they can hike as far as they want to the east to New York, Vermont border, actually eventually to, into Vermont. They can hike to the west as far as they want to, to the middle of North Dakota if they so choose. Um, that's a great attraction. Outdoor activities for our residents. Improves the health of the environment. And recognition for local businesses who decide to um, help support by offering possibly discounts to hikers coming through. How does it work? We identify the NCST on the master, city's master plan. We do some branding, marketing, communications activities, tourism and destination marketing, improved signage. There's already some signage through town um, up for the trail, but with the trail town concept, we have additional signage that would identify as a trail town. Um, communicating the town is linked to a National Scenic Trail and how important that is. Growing local awareness throughout the state and region. Uh, about a year ago, Governor Snyder suggested that he was, wanted to or have a trail from Belle Isle in Detroit all the way to Ironwood. His concept at this point still includes our trail across the UP, which means it comes right through Marquette and that's another plus. How does it work? We partner. We have opportunities to build events and programs around the trail, outreach events, hikes, festivals, 
instructional classes on backpacking, snowshoeing, bird watching, anything that you can imagine the person might do outside on the trail, and trail building workshops. Trail towns along the NCT. We have, this program is relatively new for the North Country Trail Association. Wampum, Pennsylvania was the first. Um, that was less than two years ago. St. Ignis was the first in Michigan. Um, Dayton, Ohio just became a trail town last month. So is Marquette going to be the next one on the list? I certainly hope so. What are the next steps to make a formal agreement? Um, I gave each of you a sample MOU template um, in your pack tonight. Um, we can modify that to meet Marquette's needs. Um, we would have a signing of the MOU, a ceremony, a proclamation. Um, we would sign the trail throughout Marquette. You know, like I said, there's already some signage in town, but we will provide additional signage. Mapping can be done through the NCTA office. Um, we can install additional signing, and those, that's all paid for by the National Park Service and the association. We would also collect information about Marquette and put it on the NCTA's webpage, um, pictures, a little description of Marquette, a link to the town's website, um, regional information, information on amenities that hikers would want, restaurants, campgrounds, hotels, groceries, library, post office, laundromats, sports stores, and so on. Begin promoting, get some recognition in the local media, um, reach out to businesses and other entities in the community, design promotional materials and plan events, and identify local and regional funding sources for promotional materials and events. I would not be able to be here for the next two commission meetings, um, but I would really like to come back in January and hopefully have you choose to have Marquette become the next trail town for the NCTA. Do you have any questions? Commissioners, any questions? Okay. Thank you. I, I just have a question as far as wh where, where do we take it from here? Do we have a plan uh, administratively to put this on an agenda in the future or? Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, uh, will staff will take the lead on continuing the discussions with our, our group. Uh, it'll be uh, conducted through community services and we'll bring back a report to the commission and a recommendation. Certainly, I would I would support that effort. I think I think it's a it's a real opportunity for the citizen, the the city, for the trail association, and and for uh, our citizens and businesses and, and mm -hmm. everyone in the community. Uh, any other comments on on this by any commissioners? Okay. The next item on the agenda would be uh, recognition of outgoing member is Liz is. Liz Elizabeth Roberts here from the Planning Commission. Would you meet me at the, the ceremonial podium? Elizabeth, at, at your uh, finishing your term on the Planning Commission, we have a certificate of appreciation here for your service on the Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals. You were the Planning Commission representative of the ZBA. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And we have a pin here and a t-shirt mm -hmm. to uh, thank you for your service and we certainly really do appreciate your service. It's the life a lot of our community is the, is the volunteers who, who staff our boards and commissions. And we couldn't do it without, uh, especially the city commission, we couldn't operate without the planning commission. Yeah, thank you very much. Would you like to say a few words? Um, I thank you very much for this uh, I joined the Planning Commission almost two years ago when the when TV6 um, covered the City Commission meeting where they announced that uh, they were in higher need at that time for commissioners across the board um, and I encourage everybody to take the opportunity uh, to join a commissioner board I learned a tremendous amount of stuff through uh, my service there and look forward to being able to be a part of it again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, commissioners, the next item under boards and committees is appointments. 
Uh, we have Steve Laurie, who's uh, proposed for the Planning Commission, uh, and uh, Planning Commission representative of the Zoning Board of Appeals to take uh, Elizabeth's place. Uh, Heidi Gould for the Peter White Public Library Board Trustees, Craig Ekstrom for the Sustainable Community Ad Hoc Committee, Riley Coombs for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, and Shlo Wilkinson for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, and the terms are, are listed there. Uh, is there a um, motion uh, on one or all of these? Commissioner Ryan? I would move we approve all the recommended appointments for the terms listed. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Support. Commissioner Second. Campana, thank you. Uh, it's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, support by Commissioner Campana to appoint Steve Laurie to the Planning Commission for a term ending February 18th, 2014. Heidi Gold to the Peter White Public Library Board for a term ending May 1st, 2016. Craig Ekstrom to the Sustainable Community Ad Hoc Committee, uh, term ending six or June 1, 2014, Riley Coombs to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, term ending June 1, 2014, and Chlo Wilkinson, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee for June 1, 2014. Um, all in favor of that motion, please say yes. 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 Anyone opposed that motion, please say no. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Okay. The next item is we're now down to public comment which may not <coughs> exceed three minutes per person citizens may reserve time to speak on agenda items and this could result in the agenda being moved up at my discretion so are there any citizens desiring to address the commission Frank Jeff Barito, 350 East Ridge Marquette. These are my opinions. You not only postponed the truck route meeting at the last moment, but you opened a new can of worms. This after you wasted my time in preparing a comment for the original hearing. November 12th, a resident claimed that your proposed haul route would consume three miles of the Nakaymanan Trail. His letter to the editor stated that this latest scheme fails, fails to deal with the existing traffic issues while creating brand new ones. Unknown to him, examples of this mentality are wretched within the past 15 years of public record. It's fitting that this board would attempt to solve a problem by recommending the slaughter of a natural area with three miles of new road construction and the ensuing impacts near a major trail. You unlikely even considered this ramification. Oh, it's just a bunch of trees. I first heard the route followed existing dirt roads, which isn't verified because the newly proposed route isn't on the city website. Nevertheless, leave our natural spaces alone. Instead, we visit the original ordinance with modified wording to assure convenient deliveries to Big Bay. At first, the original ordinance appeared to respond to the public need and sentiment. Further review revealed a flaw that allows for the issuance of special permits for who knows what. Mr. Ryan mentioned that city staff has drawn it up with neither commission nor public input, nor the incorporation of any possible findings from the traffic studies that we paid good money for. Am I supposed to talk to somebody whose head is down and he's writing something? Or, I mean, you've hardly looked at me, Mr. Nimi, for the whole comment. Huh. He also claimed the ordinance will put truckers out of business because the route eliminates points east of McClellan Street. We live in a community of trucks, he said. We sure agree on that point, as proven by all the noise and exhaust fumes. In truth, the original ordinance doesn't eliminate semis east of McClellan until we know what exemptions apply. Mr. Ryan doesn't want to stop logging north of Marquette, but I do. They've already logged enough up there. Aside from Presque Isle Tract, it's pretty well trashed because boards like this one have compromised on too many compromises. Now the mine seeks to run a highway across our North County under the same pressure that led to our proposed truck ordinance. By all means, allow for the delivery of consumer goods as nicely detailed in your original plan, including the deviate as little as possible from the designated trail or route. Of concern is whether the ordinance's wording might allow for the regular permitting of industrial trucks. An October 20th article states, quote, that the manager could grant written special permits for longer periods for special projects or in conjunction with special use permits granted by the BZA. That's probably the catch right there. 
The revised plan to use green space is the latest of too many examples of how this board looks upon the environment as dispensable to the benefit of industry. Please free 3rd Street and Lakeshore Boulevard from the scourge of these dangerous and filthy mining and logging trucks. Let them pursue another route. Thank you, Mr. Barito. Any other citizens wishing to address the commission? Ben Wilder, 305 Rublin. I'd like to uh, reserve time on item five. Okay. Any other citizens wishing to address the commission? There be none, we'll close the public comment portion of the agenda. And we will move to the item number one, which is the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Commissioner Ryan? I would move the consent agenda be approved. Okay. Is there a second? Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse. It is moved by Commissioner Ryan. Uh, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse to approve the consent agenda. Uh, any comment, uh, any further comment, Commissioner Ryan? No, routine items. Okay. Commissioner Stonehouse? Routine items. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll call a question then. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. The, uh, the motion's uh, approved unanimously. Item number two uh, under unfinished business is the Marquette Junior Hockey Corporation doing business as the Marquette Electrin Electricians AAA Midget Hockey Club Locker Room Lease. City Clerk, would you read the background item on this agenda item? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, background, the Marquette Junior Hockey Corporation, co Corporation doing business as Marquette Electricians AAA Midget Hockey Club has requested the City Commission consider leasing locker room space at Lakeview Arena. The City Attorney has drafted a standard lease agreement which provides for the terms and conditions of the request. The monthly payment shall be $625. The term of the lease is 12 months to commence November 1, 2013. The proposed lease agreement was introduced at the Commission's October 28, 2013 meeting. Fiscal effect. The Lakeview, Lakeview Arena Fund will receive $7,500 in revenue for FY13-14. <coughs> Recommendation, approve the lease agreement with Market Junior Hockey Corporation doing business as Market Electricians AAA Midget Hockey Club for locker room space at Lakeview Arena for a period of November 1st, 2013 through October 31st, 2014 at a rate of $625 per month and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Okay, commissioners. What is your... Sayer, Commissioner Coyne. <coughs> I move we uh, approve the lease agreement with Marquette Junior Hockey um, and uh, follow the recommendations of the city manager. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Commissioner Reynolds. It's been moved and seconded, uh, moved by Commissioner Coyne, seconded by Commissioner Reynolds to approve the lease with the Marquette Junior Hockey Corporation. Any uh, discussion, Commissioner Coyne? Nothing further. Commissioner Reynolds? Nothing further. Any other commissioner? <coughs> any comments? Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Uh, the motion is approved unanimously. The next item on the agenda is item number three, Lakeview Arena Superior Hockey LLC. Uh, City Clerk, would you read the background on this item, please? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Background. Uh, recently, the city has been approached by Superior Hockey LLC to establish a full-service hockey pro shop at the Lakeview Arena. The desired space is the former Rangers office space on the west end of the building, approximately 1,000 square feet. They are requesting a three-year lease with the option to renew by mutual consent for up to three additional three-year terms at $10 per square foot. Superior Hockey is requesting fee relief for the site improvement. It is their intent to install a new door, sidewalk, and install additional windows. They do not expect to exceed $5,000 per year in improvements and would not request more than 50% of the uh, rental rate 
uh, be relieved in any given year. The staff is not re recommending the commission consider a fee relief with for-profit tenants. <clears throat> the proposed lease agreement was introduced at the commission's September 30, 2013 meeting at their meeting on October 15, 2013. Superior Hockey LLC requested their, their lease be moved to the next regular meeting due to effects of the government shutdown on their business plans. At their meeting on October 28, 2013, the Superior Hockey LLC, LLC lease was tabled until the November 25, 2013 meeting. Uh, Superior Hockey LLC has still not received expect, expected excuse me, expected funding. Fiscal effect, the Lakeview Arena Fund would realize additional revenues of $10,260 annually and uh, with an approval of the lease request recommendation, approve the lease agreement with Superior Hockey LLC provide to provide a full service hockey pro shop at Lakeview Arena with a monthly rate of $855 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, commissioners, what is your pleasure regarding this item? Commissioner mm -hmm. Coyne? Uh, I move that we approve the lease agreement with Superior Hockey LLC to provide full service hockey pro shop at Lakeview Arena with a monthly rate of $855 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement. <coughs> okay, is there a second to that motion? Commissioner Stonehouse? I will second the motion. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coyne, any further discussion? No. Commissioner Stonehouse, any further discussion? Nothing further. Any other committee? Commissioner? Commissioner Ryan, would you? Well, I guess I have a question. Th they asked for fee relief, and we say we're not providing it. I mean, is, has this been negotiated, or are we just offering them a deal they don't want then? Or, you know, what are, what are we doing, I guess, if um, they're proposing to invest? And I'm not... At this point, I'm just asking questions uh, as to what this means. We're we're basically saying we're offering a lease without any relief for improvements. Is that correct? That's uh, we've had the discussion with the owners, um, and we've suggested to them that we were not going to recommend that re recommend any uh, leasehold improvement credit, uh, and they understand that. Okay. Just wanted to make sure where we were and. Yep, we've had that discussion. Okay. okay. Further, any commissioner, any questions or comment, discussion? Okay, barring that, uh, it's been moved by uh, <coughs> Commissioner Coyne, correct? Supported by Commissioner Stonehouse to approve the lease with Superior Hockey. All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. We are now under new business. The first item is item number four, about the town art donation by Michelle Tuccini. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, would you read? Uh, is there? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Background: <coughs> About Town is a community project that was sponsored by the Lake Superior Art Association with the assistance of the Marquette Arts and Culture Center. Local artists created large paintings of landmark buildings in Marquette in a unique way using photos of buildings that had been divided into nine segments. Each segment was then <coughs> painted by a different artist and reassembled to form one large picture. The artists were given the freedom to use whatever materials and style they preferred with the only stipulation that all of the edges must be ma maintained to scale in order for them all to fit together appropriately. Each Participant was given a 12 by 16 canvas, a full-size print of their chosen building section, a small photo of the entire building image, and directions. In all, <coughs> 39 artists painted the 45 panels that make up five landmark paintings. The, they varied in age from high school student to retirees, with experience ranging from beginners to professional artists and teachers. The materials used were just as varied, oils, acrylics, and watercolors fit side by side with encaustic, mixed media, collage, and fabric quilts. <clears throat> the About Town paintings are, be are a beautiful tribute to the talented and generous artists that created them and a lasting tribute to the beautiful architecture that makes Marquette such a beautiful place to live. Uh, 
Fiscal effect, none by this action. Recommendation, accept the donation from M Michelle Tushini of the About Town painting in, w in which the former City Hall building is the subject landmark. Alternatives as determined by the Commission. Commissioners, what is your pleasure regarding this item? Commissioner Ryan. I move we concur with the recommendation and accept the uh, paintings with gratitude. Is there a second to that motion? Commissioner Reynolds. Support. Thank you. It was moved by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Reynolds to accept the donation and express our gratitude for the donation. Uh, any further discussion, Commissioner Ryan? I think it's a unique, very unique project and very interesting. And, uh, you know, it's good to see art flourishing in Marquette as it has for many years and continuing to move forward. So, uh, very positive. Commissioner Reynolds. I just look forward to seeing it. It, would, it sounds awesome. Commissioner Coyne. And just a point of clarification. I don't appear, appear, want to appear greedy, but is it just the one painting they're giving us uh, because it says uh, in which you know the painting in which the former city hall building is subjected and they're referring in the letter to all the paintings so they're just giving us the one is that correct that's too bad because some of them are I mean all of them are terrific so uh, what are they going to do with the others do you know How could I ask uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Um, now, I, I I don't know where the others will be. Um, well, they're you know the final destination of those, but I could get back to you on that. Okay. Thank you. Anything by any other commissioner, Mr. Commissioner Stonehouse? Anybody that hasn't had a chance to stop by City Hall and see these paintings, they really should. They are quite remarkable. They are very imaginative. And uh, it, it really, you know, one of the things that art does, I think, is, is get you to look at things a different way. And truly, these paintings really do that. So I encourage folks to come on down, take a look at them. They are worth seeing. And I'm, I'm very happy we were able to get the one for City Hall. Thank you. Commissioner Campana. This may have been said, but so where's the painting going to be? At the City Hall? Is it there now? It is out in the corridor, I believe, uh, coming up to commission chambers, and I would assume that it will be di displayed here. Uh, It'll be displayed here and archived in the in the library at some point, Commissioner Coyne. Uh, just one other thought. You know, this is much like the city band. There are young teenagers playing with professional musicians in the city band, and that is a great mentor project. As is this art someone brand new painting who's painting with a professional artist right and have that appear right next to it I mean that's just a it really is a terrific project from that standpoint from the artist standpoint really is and we owe a thanks to Michelle for the project Thank you. Any other comment by commissioners I just like to comment I think this is a it's a it's a Outstanding opportunity for the city. I, and my tenure on the commission, I think one or once or two other times, we've we've accepted our work on behalf of the city, and and it's fortunate that we have people who are willing to to share their time, talent, and and, and resources with us. And the city certainly is better off as as a result of that. Uh, anything further? Then I call the question. All in favor of the motion to accept the artwork and express our gratitude, uh, say yes. 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 Anyone opposed say no. The motion is passed uh, unanimously. We are now up to item number five, which is uh, 02 PRS 1013, request to purchase city owned property located at 1101 Grant Avenue. City Clerk, would you please read the background? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. The Planning Commission reviewed a request to purchase a very small parcel of undeveloped land adjacent to Rublane Avenue and the city multi-use path south of Grant Avenue. The, the property is des designated as a portion of the bike path. After considering staff analysis, applicant input, and public comment at their October 15, 2013 regular meeting, the Planning Commission passed the following motion. It was moved by CLIP, seconded by Penglaze, and carried 5-0. Then in response to 02-PRS-10-13, the Planning Commission would like to recommend that the City Commission sell the property due to the 
due to the requesting person being an adjacent landowner who would be contiguous if the alley is vacated and because the applicant would make the best use of the property due to the character of it, the small size, and the location next to the bike path, and because the, constra the constraints to building a structure will ensure a reasonable buffer, buffer for the bike path. <coughs> Please see the attached for the complete packet of information given to the Planning Commission and the meeting minutes of the October 15, 2013 meeting. Fiscal effect, the city will realize a one-time income of $2,500 for the property recommendation, concur with the Planning Commission's recommendation to sell a property, and direct the city manager and, and city attorney to complete the sale. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Thank you, city clerk. Um, Mr. Wilder, did you want to address this or just answer questions or both? I just wanted to make myself available to the commission if anybody had any concerns. One thing I did want to add besides the $2,500, I mean, it is going on tax rolls. I don't know. You know, it's not MGH, it's not Wisconsin Electric, but it's something. So We'll charge you year after year. <laughs> That's all right. I'll be around for a while. It was an interesting process. I, I would like to thank uh, the city staff for their professionalism and guiding me through this and just keep me up to date and let me know be here tonight and whatnot. Sometimes I don't think they get all the the praise they deserve for just doing your job, but doing it in a very professional way, such as the, the people I dealt with. But if anybody had any questions for me, they'd uh, be willing to answer them. Wilder. Um, commissioners, what is your pleasure? Would you like to make a motion or, or suspend the rules or Commissioner Ryan? I, I would move we approve the sale as recommended by the Planning Commission. Commissioner Coyne? Support. You'll second it? Okay. Uh, it's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, supported by, seconded by Commissioner Coyne to uh, approve the sale as proposed. Uh, any further comment, Commissioner Ryan? Yeah I, yeah, I have great confidence in the Planning Commission and matters of this type. I think they always look very carefully when, when these kinds of requests are made. I think they've studied it carefully. I think they've gone through the process. I think they've made a decision based on the fact that it's a very small piece of property that could not be used for other things. In fact, it's better that it be used this way than even considered for something else. So I, I think it makes it makes sense for the city. Commissioner Coyne, any comment? Yes, thank you. Um, in all of these cases, I like to drive by and look actually physically see what, what all the pictures are and what the comments from the Planning Commission were. And uh, frankly, I think it makes a great deal of sense. And uh, looking at the condition of your property, uh, it's outstanding and if you look at the condition of the small little triangle it's not so outstanding <laughs> so if your present home and lawn and uh, yard is an indication I think it's going to be a real improvement both for you and for us uh, because I think you'll do a very nice job and thank you for thinking of it and pursuing it. Any other comments? Commissioner Stonehouse. I just wanted to thank the, the Planning Commission for the packet that they gave us. And that, uh, it really, I thought, was very professionally put together, very, very, very well done. Uh, contained, I think, the data that we really had to have to be able to make an honest decision on, on this question. So again, I, I thank them uh, very much for the, the great work that they did. Okay. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Campana. I would be in favor of this only because if you know if Mr. Wilder is going to clean it up and fix it up, it can only be good. So why not? Nothing to lose. Any other commissioners? Okay. Um, I I concur with my fellow commissioners. I think it's uh, I appreciate com uh, Mr. Wilder coming forward and appreciate your comments on city staff. It's it, uh, uh, we we are uh, blessed by having a, a efficient staff who. who for the most part helps people and not everyone thinks that but I think on the most part I think they do so I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'll call the question. All in favor of selling this property to Mr. Wilder uh, say yes. 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 All opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. We're an agreeable group tonight. The next item on the agenda is number six Market Junior Hockey Corporation Ice Time. City Clerk, would you read the background? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. For the past 16 years, the Lakeview Arena has signed annual user contracts with the Marquette Junior Hockey Corporation for ice use at the facility. 
These contracts provide the arena with a predictable revenue stream and the MJHC with a seasonal schedule of ice time. Fiscal effect, the Lakeview Arena Fund will receive a minimum of $197,807 in revenue. Recommendation, approve, a con approve the contract with the Marquette Junior Hockey Corporation for ice use at Lakeview Arena for the period November 1, 2013 through March 30, 2014 for a minimum of $197,807 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Mr. Ryan? I move we approve the uh, recommend recommendation and uh, enter into that contract with the uh, Market Junior Hockey. Is there a second to the motion? Commissioner Reynolds? Support. Okay. It was moved by Commissioner Ryan, uh, seconded by Commissioner Reynolds to approve the contract with Market Junior Hockey Corporation for ice use at Lakeview Arena. Any further comments, Commissioner Ryan? Yes, I, I'd like to thank Market Junior Hockey. You know, we have an arena, you know, and it, it's, uh, it, it serves many purposes in our community. It helps a lot of kids have a lot of exercise and a lot of fun. But it's, uh, you know, the, the fact that they're raising that kind of money to help us support the arena is a very positive thing as far as I'm concerned. So I appreciate, and I know they're a volunteer organization, I certainly appreciate their efforts on behalf of the kids and, and also helping to make the uh, arena a viable uh, part of our community. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Any further comment, Commissioner Reynolds? Okay. Commissioner Ryan said it all. Oh, okay. Any other commissioner? <coughs> okay, seeing none. All in favor of the motion, say yes. 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 All opposed to the motion, say no. The motion is passed unanimously. The next item on the agenda is number seven, City Commission Rules of Procedure. Uh, City Clerk, would you read the background item on this? Yes, Your Honor. Each year the Commission adopts rules of procedure to help the Commission run, a, run an efficient meeting and to deal with the public and media in a positive, positive manner. The attached version places the rules in outline format with suggested changes marked in blue. Fiscal effect none. Recommendation. Discuss the City Commission rules of procedure and determine if any changes should be made. Alternatives as determined by the Commission. Commissioners, what is your pleasure with this item? Commissioner Coyne? Well, I move that we uh, adopt the proposed rules of procedure with the one exception of getting rid of our code of agenda preparation, eliminating uh, the second public comment at the end of the meeting. Is there a second to that motion? second for the purpose of discussion. Commissioner Stonehouse uh, will second the motion. Commissioner Coyne, any further discussion? Uh, I'll pass right at the moment. <coughs> Commissioner Stonehouse, any discussion? No. Okay. Commissioner Ryan? I, I guess I'm not sure what we're proposing here, so I, I, I'm just asking what uh, what is it we're proposing to do? We're, we're amending. It we're is amending the work. Commissioner Quinn, would you like to? Is it, your motion is to clarify. My motion was to adopt the rules as presented, with the exception of uh, item number B, agenda preparation, sub one K, public comment, <coughs> and eliminating that. That that's my motion. And it eliminates what? I, I, you're the looking at a piece of paper, and I'm not. I'm just. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm looking at a piece of paper is my computer isn't working. I'm not, I'm not questioning <laughs> that. I'm uh, just saying I don't know what it is. Are we eliminating public comment at the end of the meeting? It yes. It would be on page four of eleven. Right, okay. right there. The top. Right there. Uh, and that, that would, would be, be three of this. Excuse me. That four would be eliminated. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, Commissioner Coyne, is that, which one is it? It's on K. Uh, keep going. K, okay. It right would be the second comment, <coughs> public comment. Okay. Any other discussion? Commissioner <coughs> Ryan. Well, you know, I, 
I don't think I can support this. I, I think there are citizens who have legitimate things to say at the conclusion of our meeting. It sometimes helps to clean up things that were left unsaid, and so I, you know, I, I, I believe we should continue to maintain that. I won't give you a long speech, but that's basically what I feel. Any other comment? Commissioner Campana? Um, I wanted this to be talked about because, yeah, I think there's there's got to be reasons as to why Mike would like to do this. Um, <coughs> I would agree uh, that um, the reason not to do it would be perhaps because at the end of a meeting, people all of a sudden have come up with an idea that they got to bring forth. Most of the time, they're construct or hopefully they're constructive ideas. You know, and at the end of the meeting, a constructive idea could be a good thing. If you eliminate the three-minute talk, you don't get that. And I know I was here at a meeting how long ago where it went from five minutes to three minutes. Caused kind of a stir. A little one. Was that good or bad? I don't know. It's probably <coughs> good. I think the meetings are too long here anyway, but, uh, you know, it, it, what we can do to shorten them isn't bad. But you got to shorten them for the right reasons. So I just would like to hear, you know, the reasons for eliminating. That's thank you. Sure. Um, well, the reason being is it just didn't come off the top of my head. I, I many of us have communication from people who we represent, and um, a lot of comments I get are. Uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday a person came up and said, how do you stand some of the things that are said at the end of the meeting? Um, if I, and the, the next words out of many of those people's mouths are, I would never run for city commission because of that kind of abuse and treatment. And uh, it, uh, so I think that's one thing. Um, and I, I agree that at times there are times when people wish to talk uh, about something at the end of the meeting. We have wide opportunities. Every single one of us have a web, uh, man, uh, an email, and, and the ma manager has open meetings in the library. Those are opportunities, and they're not generally spent uh, berating or telling the commissioners how awful individuals are or how awful we are as a commission over, over, and over, and over again. Uh, and I think it's a negative thing to end the meeting on, frankly. And so that's why I am bringing it up, uh, because people have continually said that to me. And uh, as all of us have experienced, it's sometimes very difficult because of freedom of speech. Uh, but you also can demonstrate freedom of speech through the uh, email and through phone calls and so forth, and I I not on television. And it's very interesting, nobody ever comes to or not nobody, but hardly nobody ever comes to our work sessions or budget sessions that are not televised. So it is kind of a show, okay? And that's what I find objectionable. That's why I brought this up. And if it's the will of the commission to continue that, I'm fine. I'll vote for continuing it. But I think it just needs to be brought up and you decide. And if you decide no, you want to continue, that's fine. I just, that's my opinion. Thank you. <coughs> As you well know, it is very difficult to get people to come and do this job, and it makes it more difficult if every single person gets berated with a public service. So that could end. You know, I, I agree with, with many of Commissioner Coyne's comments. Uh, especially when, when so many of the uh, presentations are negative. But, you know, I, I guess we live in a democracy, and, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, if people want to talk to us, I think we have them to give them that opportunity. I, I think to shut it down is, is, is letting somebody else win and not, not the, the citizens who really want to present us with some information. So that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. And I will raise this issue. You watch at the next meeting or at this meeting what will be directed at me for saying this. 
That's the way I feel. And many people have also told me they turn off the television because they can't stand watching it for that. So I'm ready to take the heat for it. That's the way I feel. Um, and uh, I think it would be a very positive step rather than uh, a negative step. And many, many other groups uh, who have boards, public boards, limit it at the beginning of the meeting. That's reality. Any other commissioner? Commissioner Campana? I think the mic raises some good points. You know, that's what I wanted to hear. Can't argue them. I, I, I still feel that you can't. You know, you, like Don says, you got to have public out, you know, input. But we now live in the age of email. It's not on. We now live in the age of email, phone calls. You know, there's no reason we can't be contacted. So this is a this is a good one. Thank you. Anything else, any commissioner? Um, I guess I, I I think there's uh, been a lot of good points made. Uh, I agree that uh, with Commissioner Ryan that uh, it is democracy. We 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 need to give people a, an opportunity to speak, and sometimes. Uh, if uh, we were to eliminate this, uh, perhaps some of the, the negative uh, influences uh, would, would be advanced as a result of it. Uh, Commissioner Campana makes a, a good point about uh, sometimes people will bring in good ideas. Uh, a compromise or a, a middle ground between that may be to not eliminate the three minutes, but maybe reduce the three minutes, maybe reduce it to two minutes versus three minutes. I, Commissioner Coyne? Um, uh, if I could speak to that, I don't think two minutes is long enough to uh, to give a comprehensive, well thought out plan. That's that's just I think it's either going to be to me two minutes is not enough. Three minutes is pretty short, frankly. Uh, if you've ever tried to say anything in three minutes, it's very difficult. Um, so I, I I wouldn't I I don't think two minutes is enough. Um, and I bet you that if we stop televising this, we would this would end, period. So uh, just think of that. I, I mean, it's a travesty m many of the times, most of the time. And um, so. Sure, Stonehouse. Just a couple comments. I've never seen any other board that has two public comment sessions built in. Invariably, it's only one and usually at the beginning of the meeting. I've never seen one with two. It's also true that the public has the right to speak against any agenda item that we have. They simply announce that they want to speak <coughs> against it and they can. So there really is full opportunity for the public to give discourse to us throughout the, throughout the meeting as, as they have need to or, or, or see need to. But I, I, I also think that Commissioner Coyne made a, a, a very telling point when he talked about the difficulty of getting people to run for the commission and one of the primary reasons being that they don't want to take the constant abuse and they see that as just a, a continuing drain and a continuing hammering that frankly turns a lot of very good people off from public service and to a point you can look at that and say well you know that's that's true but but that's that's part of the job and you have to take it on the other hand, when you look at it through the, uh, through the perspective of society today and technology today, it really isn't relevant anymore. In other words, there's so many means of communication, so many means of contacting, so many means of talking to people, so many means of making your, your viewpoints and your perspectives known that simply had a, having an added three-minute period at the end of a, of a commission meeting no longer serves any useful purpose. Uh, and uh, the idea that if we pull the cameras, it will end, it will end. Absolutely. If we pull the cameras so that the public at large cannot see the meeting, we're doing a great disservice to the public, obviously, and we, I, I don't think we would ever consider that. But certainly it would largely impact on, on much of the negative and the vindictive that, uh, that spews here so often. So it's a difficult question. Um, uh, certainly uh, on, on many, many levels. 
trying to entertain what the public should have and, and the right of access to their elected commissioners <coughs> and what makes sense in today's technology and what makes sense based on, on what other groups are doing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not going to get a big debate going here. I'm just going to say that I, I do know that over the past five years there have been many times when citizens have got up at the end of the meeting and made positive comments or made comments clarifying an issue or made comments that, that were germane to doing our job here. So uh, I, I won't support this. I, I put it, that's where I stand. So, but I understand where everybody's coming from, believe me. Reynolds? Twofold. Um, <clears throat> when I was a member of the Housing Commission, we had public comment beginning and end. We'd often find that people would come at the end because they couldn't make the beginning. So if we took it off at the end, I think that if somebody was coming in late, wanted to make a public comment but couldn't be here, I think we would be doing them an injustice. And so I would disagree with that as well. Call for a vote. Oh. This would, this would be a on this motion to be extended another motion. Um, yeah. Point, point of order. I believe the motion is to approve the rules with this change. Correct. And if it fails, then we would need another motion. But if it right. approved, we right. won't need another motion. Point of that order. That was my point of order. Okay. I think we were. Um, the question before the Commission is to approve the Commission rules with the elimination of the second uh, public comment which would be uh, in the rules item K under on page 4 uh, of 11. Um, all in favor of the motion say yes. 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 Okay. I will say yes. All opposed say no. 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 Okay. Have the motion is approved with four in the affirmative and two in the negative. So the motion, the rules are approved with the elimination of the second uh, citizen comment pe period at the end of the meeting. Do these take effect immediately, or should we? I would say that they, they take at, at the next meeting. The next yeah. Meeting, so. Okay. <coughs> Okay, item number eight is a SAW grant agreement, and I'm assuming SAW stands for sewer and water. Um, Mr. Clerk, would you give the background on this item? Thank you, Your Honor, yes. <coughs> Public Act 562 of 2012 authorizes a portion of the Great Lakes Water Quality Bond issued by the state to be used toward providing grants and loans to municipalities for stormwater asset management wastewater SAW programs. The total of $450 million allocated for this purpose with $97 million available in fiscal year 2014. Grant funds are available up to $2 million per municipality with a match of 10% for the first million and 25% for the second million. The City of Marquette has completed a SAW grant application which supports improvements in the city's stormwater assets, wastewater collection system assets, and asset management program through, <coughs> through projects. Twenty-nine projects have been recommended by administrative staff from the Water and Wastewater Engineering and Public Works Departments. Projects include, included in the SAW grant application were based on the city's six-year capital improvement plan, water and wastewater master plan, regulatory compliance requirements, and the value of maintaining and improving water quality. Attached is a list of the projects identified in the SAW grant application. The local match will only be required for projects approved by the commission through the budget process. Fiscal effect, if awarded, the city of Marquette would receive grant revenue 
grant revenue up to one million six hundred sixty nine thousand four hundred nineteen dollars in water sewer and stormwater utility funds over a three-year period the three hundred thirty four thousand two hundred fifty one dollars in match would be integrated into the city budget as approved by the commission recommendation adopt a resolution authorizing the saw grant agreement and designate the city manager as the authorized representative on the agreement alternatives as determined by the commission Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, what is the pleasure, Commissioners, on this item? Commissioner Ryan? I move we concur with the recommendation. Is there a second to that motion? Commissioner Stonehouse? Um, second. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Ryan, any further discussion? No further discussion. Commissioner Stonehouse? Absolutely none. Okay. I just have a, a comment. I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for the city um, it uh, gets us some money for the utility that we, we wouldn't have gotten otherwise and certainly will allow us <coughs> to do some things. So. Uh, see, do we need a roll call vote on this resolution? Or? Okay. Uh, I'll then call the question. All in favor of the resolution, please say yes. 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 If anyone's opposed, please say no. Then uh, the motion or the resolution is adopted unanimously the last item is the addition of the video purchase equipment for the Commission chambers um, would uh, see Andrew would you explain the the background on this item we don't have a, a written but this is added tonight uh, out of necessity yes thank you your honor and uh, do I'd like to thank the Commission for their patience in hearing this uh, as part of the annual budget process we uh, received approval to upgrade the commission chambers to replace some of the aging audio video equipment including the overhead displays the television cameras the uh, uh, sound infrastructure and then the audio video equipment that actually is used to connect us to charter communications and all of that technology is paid for out of the peg fund uh, that we get as part of the franchise agreement with charter communications uh, we've we've been working on uh, lining up sources for that and I found out at about an hour before the meeting tonight that as a result of Black Friday sales, uh, we had been out taking quotes on some of the display technology that we wanted here in the chamber. And uh, we can get 50% off on the video displays that we'd like to get. It would, if we can act on this before Thursday, which is when the terms of the sale expire, we'd be able to save uh, somewhere on the order of about $9,000 on the displays. And we'd like to take advantage of that. And so uh, this is a request because it's over the uh, discretionary limit that I could uh, exercise administratively. I'm seeking the commission's approval for that purchase tonight. I understand that the bottom line is that we'll save about three nine thousand dollars if we approve this. Does this mean that our IT director is going to start camping out now for <laughs> <laughs> Black Friday sales? Or? I can't make any commitments, <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> Uh, are there any questions, uh, commissioners, on this on this issue? Uh, barring any further questions, uh, I'll uh, request a a uh, motion. Also, move, Your Honor. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, Commissioner Campana. Um, it's been moved to authorize staff to purchase three. Video monitors for the commission chambers at the the uh, um, arrangements or the prices uh, delineated by the city manager. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if that's if that's what his recommendation. Is that your recommendation? <coughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Um, all in favor, say yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. I, I neglected to request any further discussion. I was there. I was just going to ask. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Ryan. I was just going to ask a question. Um, okay. Are we moving ahead with the other aspects of this as well? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The, uh, thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, it's th really three parts. Uh, we'll have the chambers video systems upgraded. We'll have the chamber audio and camera systems upgraded, and we're trying to get the back end back office upgrades set up so that 
Uh, we could use some mobile and wireless technologies so that in the future we'll be able to broadcast from places like the Lakeview Arena from the community room and other things. But this is primarily display equipment you're talking about yes, now? Yes, this would be a replacement to the pull-down screens. We're also talking about cameras and... Yes, those they'll all come from the same funding source, but they, they uh, terms and conditions f f for their availability is different from the Black, Black Friday sale. So we thought w with this we'd like to try to take advantage of that, that sales uh, as quickly as we could. And I think it's worth mentioning, and I believe I'm correct, that these PEG funds can only be used for this kind of purchase. So Exclusively. Yep, that's what they're designated for. Sorry for... Uh, that's okay. <laughs> that's your first yep. time. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that's the... We, we've completed our... Our agenda, the next item is public comment. Comments should be limited to three minutes per person. In the last two times I called for public comment, I neglected to instruct people to give their name and address. And I would assume that veteran commenters would know that, but uh, apparently we need to, to do that. So please, anyone who wants to address the commission, please come to the podium and give your name and, and address and proceed with your public comments. Thanks, Jeff Verito, 350 East Ridge Marquette. These are my opinions. Initially, Public Works designed a good leaf pickup schedule. The trouble is the plan allowed for no flexibility once only half of the leaves had fallen by the last pickup. As a result, taxpayers paid to run heavy trucks down every street in town to remove hardly any bags. What outlandish waste. Maybe the biggest waste of Public Works money we've seen in years. You left a 1,000 residents with leaves and no one to take them. The forecast was such that you ought to have delayed the last pickup by at least a week. City Hall did well to open the compost site last Saturday, except most people had the means to haul. Again, the elderly and people with disabilities were affected the most. Last summer, we, we received a state grant to improve accessibility and seating at the Farther Marquette statue. Hopefully this access can be achieved from the south without affecting the path to Front Street or the vegetation atop and surrounding the bottom of the outcropping. October 28th, Mr. Schneider reminded us that bikes aren't allowed on sidewalks. He neglected to address the wider picture that fully beveled corners are a better, a safer, and a least expensive design for all users. November 12th, Mr. Ryan said of the new members, they're elected one week and on the job the next. There's not much time to prepare. This is because most would-be members seldom show their faces in here unless we pay them. For example, Mr. Ryan, who through 16 years only appeared for a few big money items. Right, it was 14 or 12 before he was elected anyway. Of those mem of the, all the, those members through the years, only Mr. Potvin, Stonehouse, and Campana bothered to attend meetings well prior to their elections. Mr. Coyne complimented Mr. Schneider for challenging his thinking to come to a compromise. The greatest thing we can do as commissioners is listen, he said like the time he completely turned his back during citizen comment. We've compromised on too many compromises, as is evident across the country. Oh yes, and we're still waiting for Mr. Ryan to tell us which few places are better than Marquette. But I don't think he's listening right now. He's flipping the agenda and has his mind totally someplace else. Exactly. November 12th, Mr. Cho uh, Ryan chose not to answer for his claim that the BLP increase was a business decision instead of political, despite your mishandling of the item. To save your own faces, you approved all three years instead of having them return with a first-year option. And I favored the first 8.5% increase. BLP management explained how increasing rates at this time of year is least noticeable on our bills. Actually, it's most evident. This is when electric use increases sharply and the most BLP income can be generated the fastest. People are also saving for the holidays. The impact is huge at this time of year, a business decision for sure, though not to the consumer's benefit. Thank you, Mr. Verito. Anyone else wishing? Good evening. Your Malanke, Nate Marquette Drive. Uh, I want to welcome new commissioners. Uh, thank you for sticking, stepping up the plate with all the things that happen in the background and the uh, existing custo uh, uh, commissioners. I welcome you back as well. Uh, as you well know, I represent the city of Marquette on the Landfill Authority, and we do have uh, uh, citizen comment at the beginning and at the end as well, but we are not televised, so we don't get the abuse that you guys do. 
I was hoping that you would uh, consider uh, uh, a rule of conduct and behavior in the commission chambers versus uh, taking the uh, second public comment out. Uh, it, it leaves people uh, uh, not the opportunity to, to speak on items that were discussed during the commission and render uh, their opinion and then you still have a time to discuss and you may or may not want to change those particular items and sometimes you have done so. Uh, so unfortunately the baby was thrown out with the bathwater here with one individual uh, being so so negative and yes uh, I was at a funeral this past week and there were several people that came up to me and said gee it is really nice to have your, myself as a positive uh, aspect in the end of the uh, presentation versus so negative. And so there's a, a large uh, amount of population that do watch the city commission meetings and are very displeased with the negative comments that are uh, uh, directed to the commissioners. And uh, hopefully as time goes along, the conduct of behavior can be changed uh, in the uh, city uh, chambers here and then the public comment can be put back at the end. Uh, versus having one individual completely taken away from everybody else. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Lankinen. Any other citizens wishing to address the commission? Anyone else wishing to address the commission? Seeing none, we will then proceed to comments from commissioners. And we'll start tonight with uh, Commissioner Campana. <coughs> I'll keep it short. I got a call today uh, from a friend of mine who's a Vietnam veteran. He's 100% disabled. And there's a program out there where if you're 100% uh, disabled, you can sign up to have uh, your homestead property taxed um, abated. You just got to go down. And he, he went down to City Hall and he uh, talked to Sue Bovan, who would be the Sesser. And very, very pleased with her. First phone call I got, and he was very happy with the city personnel, city staff. So, you know, he wanted me to tell everybody what a good job she did, whereas the other municipalities are not quite up to speed on it because some of his friends in other places had had trouble signing up for this. But Sue Bovan did a good job. Thank you. Commissioner Stonehouse. Um... Boy, I look forward to being a trail town. I, I think this is a great opportunity for the city and, uh, and certainly do thank the good folks at, at the uh, North Country Trail for thinking of us and for looking at ways that we can, uh, we can be more successful. So thank you very much for, for the efforts on our behalf and hopefully we'll soon be able to come forward with a resolution to make all that work. Uh, we do have, as the mayor indicated, a huge number of, uh, of, of vacancies on city committees and boards. I certainly encourage folks out there to apply for them, to get involved in city government, to help make it better. Uh, there's, we have so many boards that, that really are a great service to the city and allow everybody, I think, to kind of pick an area that they want to contribute in and how they want to contribute. And this is the way to do it. This is a great, great way to learn about municipal government, city government, to learn how Marquette works and how we can all make it better. So I encourage you to, to take a look at that list and, and please step aboard and, and help all of us keep the wagon moving. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Commissioner Reynolds. Um, I too would like to just thank the Market Area Wastewater Treatment Board and the North Country Trail Association for their presentations and I also look forward to being a trail town. Um, also I'd like to thank Michelle Tushini for the donation of art and I hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving and safe travels. Thank you. Commissioner Ryan? Uh, yeah, I guess I'd like to say something positive about the leaf pickup um, because they picked up a lot of leaves from my house. <laughs> I, um, I had them piled out on the curb for the first pickup, and I had quite a few bags for the second pickup. You know, and I think this, this, this year points out the dilemma that the Public Works Department has in planning this activity. Because, yes, the leaves did not fall as early as they do sometimes, but the snow arrived last weekend, you know, and you can't be picking up those leaves in the snow. So I do appreciate the fact that they added an extra Saturday drop-off and believe it or not, I was there in the snow dropping off some <laughs> bags of leaves, which I had raked up the previous Sunday when the Detroit Lions were losing their football game. And I figured there's got to be something better than sitting in here <laughs> watching this. So 
I was very pleased about that. I was also happy to hear about the North Country Trail presentation, and hopefully we will be able to move forward on that because I think it's a very positive thing. And also to Kurt uh, Goodman and, and his group with the uh, grant. Uh, he's, he's In the five years I've been here, he has a habit of smelling these things out. Maybe that's the wrong term to use for <laughs> the sewer department guy, but, but uh, he, he tends to know where these grants are, and so it, it's, uh, it's a very positive thing, and we appreciate that effort. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Coyne. Uh, thank you. Uh, I echo uh, both of the previous commissioner's comments, and about, especially about the trail town. I uh, appreciate your initiative of doing it, and uh, I think it's important that we say good things so the city manager will get the message and <laughs> pursue that. Um, uh, I have two kind of whiny things. Okay, so I'll be whiny now for a minute. Um, the uh, new TV 10 camera person was here torturing us with the huge light in our face when, no, when the other person was talking. And if people don't understand that, in the audience particularly, we could have her do that for a half an hour, shining it in your face. It's just really, really annoying. And for some reason, for a whole year, they didn't ever turn that light on, uh, on and then all of a sudden, it's on. So maybe we could ask her if that's really, really necessary, uh, or I'm going to have to become Joe Mack-like and get sunglasses and a plaid sports shirt or jacket to wear. I mean, that, that's torture. Uh, another question I have about Lakeshore Boulevard. Increasingly, I've noticed more and more trucks on Lakeshore Boulevard, which weigh more than 10 tons, particularly Gens's trucks. I think they're ash trucks. But there is a sign uh, at the at Beefaroo corner, 10, you know, t load limit 10. So they have cleverly figured out to go to Barraga and turn there, or go to Maine, or go wherever. And is it? I want to ask the city manager, is, is that 10 truck limit, 10 ton truck limit just between uh, the Beefaroo and um, Barriga, or is it all of Lakeshore? Could I ask somebody? I will. Yeah, it's, it's my understanding it was just that uh, Founders Landing section, but I could be wrong on that. I'd like to be able to check and verify that for you. Okay, it doesn't seem to make much sense to just have it there uh, because uh, that's, you know, in the summer everybody from everywhere drives 10 miles an hour there looking around and then in the winter time, it, it, I mean, it doesn't, just doesn't make any sense not to have that whole boulevard at, at that limit because there are trucks going there early in the morning, there's logging trucks going by at four in the morning. I was up once at that time and followed one down there. And then, and then they're turning, they're pulling out on Barriga, which is in a car ha hard enough to do. And if you do it in a truck, that's even worse and dangerous. So I, I think that that's not a good idea. And if you could pursue that, I would appreciate it. And sorry to be negative. Uh, if I could just clarify one point, you're you're saying that Lakeshore Boulevard all the way to uh, Polly Street is yes. that what you're suggesting? Okay, I'll yes. look into that for you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Coyne. Um, kind of continuing on that, uh, I think probably the impetus for the, the ban originally was because of the fancy uh, brick pavers or concrete pavers we had on there. We don't have them anymore, but I. I guess I kind of support the idea of I'm, I'm not a, a real fan of trucks on one of our most scenic routes. And, and uh, if, if you'd look back, look into that, uh, Ch Mr. Chief of Police, we'd certainly appreciate that. Um, I'd like to wish everyone a, a happy Thanksgiving. I, I lend my support also to the, the trails. I think it's, it's, a, it's a grand idea, and I'm sure the city manager has gotten the, the message so far. <laughs> He's quite adept at, at gleaning what our opinions might be. And uh, I'd like to announce, and I m meant to announce this with my announcements and forgot, on December 5th there will be a holiday parade and a tree lighting to kick off the, the holiday season. Uh, and in that vein, I'd, I'd like to, uh, again, thank everyone, or wish everyone a, a, a happy Thanksgiving and uh, a safe and safe holiday season, which uh, is just now beginning. So with that, I, I have nothing further. Mr. City Manager, do you have any comments? 
Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, too, would like to share the commission's kind views on Thanksgiving. I hope everybody has a great time with their family, some time off. Uh, it means a couple days down here at City Hall, so we'll be closed Thursday and Friday. So if you are planning on coming down for any reason to visit us, uh, please be advised. We won't be open Thursday or Friday, uh, but we'll be back open the week after. Also, in that same vein, with the holiday season upon us, uh, December, also the end of the month and into the New Year's is a uh, closed session for, for a lot of City Hall. There are a lot of employees typically away. And the calendar for the city commission will have a city commission meeting on the 9th. Uh, and then the second one is always a week, week later on the 16th. Uh, we'll still have community office hours on the intervening Wednesday. That's the 11th of, of December. So there will be a, a seven day period where we'll have two city commission meetings and community office hours, uh, which is a little bit unlike any other month. Uh, so just wanted to give people a heads up so they can plan their calendar accordingly. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, I guess with that, we're we're now adjourned. <laughs>